What really happened on that fateful night in Pripyat? It was April 26, 1986, when the world watched in horror as the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, a symbol of Soviet progress, was ripped apart from within. The explosion released a radioactive cloud that spread across Europe, leaving behind an eerie ghost town and a legacy of fear and uncertainty. The story of Chernobyl is a complex tapestry woven from human ambition, political pressure, design flaws, and a series of fateful decisions. At the heart of the Chernobyl disaster lay the RBMK-1000 reactor, a Soviet-designed reactor known for its unique characteristics and inherent flaws. Unlike its Western counterparts, the RBMK-1000 was a graphite-moderated reactor, meaning it used graphite to slow down neutrons and sustain the nuclear chain reaction. The positive void coefficient meant that in the event of a power surge, the reactor's power output would increase rather than decrease, creating a dangerous feedback loop. This counterintuitive behavior was a significant design flaw that played a crucial role in the Chernobyl disaster. Adding to the reactor's inherent instability was the lack of a robust containment structure, a standard safety feature in Western-designed reactors. The absence of a strong containment structure at Chernobyl meant that any significant breach in the reactor core would have catastrophic consequences. The RBMK-1000 reactor, with its positive void coefficient and lack of a strong containment structure, was a disaster waiting to happen. The Chernobyl disaster exposed not only the flaws in the RBMK-1000 reactor design, but also the systemic weaknesses within the Soviet nuclear industry. The Soviet Union, driven by its ambition to be a global superpower, had prioritized rapid expansion of its nuclear program over meticulous safety protocols. This approach created a culture of secrecy and complacency that ultimately contributed to the disaster. Engineers and operators were often kept in the dark about the reactor's design flaws and potential risks. This lack of information hampered their ability to respond effectively to emergencies. The culture of secrecy extended beyond the walls of the power plant, with Soviet authorities initially attempting to downplay the severity of the disaster to the international community. The Soviet system's emphasis on meeting production quotas and adhering to strict deadlines created an environment where safety was often compromised in the pursuit of efficiency. The Chernobyl disaster was a stark reminder that technological advancements, no matter how impressive, are only as safe as the systems and culture in which they operate. The events leading up to the Chernobyl disaster began with a seemingly routine safety test, a test designed to assess the reactor's ability to power emergency systems in the event of a power outage. The test had been planned for several hours, but due to a series of delays and miscommunications, it was pushed back to the early hours of April 26, 1986. This delay would prove to be a fatal error, as it placed the reactor in the hands of a less experienced night shift crew. The test required the operators to manually lower the reactor's power output to simulate a power outage. However, due to a combination of design flaws and operator errors, the power output dropped far lower than intended, putting the reactor in an extremely unstable condition. The reactor's positive void coefficient, coupled with the low power level, created a recipe for disaster. As the operators struggled to regain control of the reactor, a series of critical errors further exacerbated the situation. The stage was set for disaster. Seconds to disaster, a cascade of errors. In the control room of reactor number four, tension hung heavy in the air as the clock ticked past 1.23 a.m. The operators, unaware of the dangerous state of the reactor, continued with the safety test, their actions setting off a chain of events that would culminate in catastrophe. One operator following protocol pressed the AZ-5 button, intended to shut down the reactor. However, instead of gracefully shutting down, the reactor surged with unimaginable power. The control rods designed to slow down the nuclear reaction were inserted too slowly due to a design flaw. The reactor, now in a supercritical state, experienced a massive power surge, far exceeding its design limits. The surge caused a rapid increase in temperature and pressure within the reactor core. The heat generated was so intense that it caused the cooling water to flash into steam, creating a massive explosion that ripped through the reactor building. The core of reactor number four, once a source of power, was now a raging inferno, spewing radioactive material into the atmosphere. April 26, 1986. The night the world changed. 
The explosion at Chernobyl was not a single event but rather a cascade of failures, a chilling testament to the catastrophic consequences of human error and technological hubris. The immediate aftermath was nothing short of apocalyptic. The explosion and subsequent fire released a plume of radioactive material that rose miles into the atmosphere, carrying with it a silent killer that would spread across Europe and beyond. The nearby city of Pripyat, home to many of the plant's workers and their families, was transformed into a ghost town within hours. Residents, initially told to stay indoors, were evacuated with little explanation, leaving behind their belongings, their lives upended in an instant. The Soviet Union, initially reluctant to acknowledge the scale of the disaster, was forced to confront the grim reality. Firefighters, ill-equipped and unaware of the invisible danger they faced, rushed to extinguish the blaze, their heroism coming at a terrible cost. The Chernobyl disaster sent shockwaves around the world, exposing the dangers of nuclear energy and raising profound questions about safety, secrecy, and responsibility. Silent Killers, The Invisible Fallout In the aftermath of the explosion, an invisible enemy stalked the land radiation. It permeated the air, settled on the ground, and contaminated everything it touched. The invisible fallout, carried by wind currents, spread far beyond the borders of the Soviet Union, reaching as far as Western Europe and Scandinavia, triggering a wave of panic and fear. Iodine-131, with its relatively short half-life, posed an immediate threat, accumulating in the thyroid gland and increasing the risk of cancer, especially in children. Cesium-137 and strontium-90, with their longer half-lives, contaminated the soil and water, posing long-term risks to human health and the environment. The true extent of the disaster's impact on human health remains a subject of debate and ongoing research. Increased rates of cancer, birth defects and other health problems have been reported in the areas most affected by the fallout. The invisible fallout from Chernobyl serves as a stark reminder of the enduring legacy of nuclear disasters. In the years following the Chernobyl disaster, the exclusion zone, a vast area surrounding the power plant, has become a breeding ground for strange tales and unexplained phenomena. Whispers of strange creatures, mutated by radiation, and eerie occurrences within the abandoned city of Pripyat have become part of the Chernobyl folklore, blurring the lines between fact and fiction. Some witnesses claim to have encountered bizarre creatures lurking in the shadows of the abandoned buildings, their forms twisted and distorted by radiation. Others speak of strange lights and unexplained noises emanating from the deserted power plant, as if the ghosts of that fateful night still linger among the ruins. One of the most enduring mysteries surrounding Chernobyl is the so-called Blackbird sightings. Whether these unexplained phenomena are products of imagination, the result of radiation exposure or something entirely unknown, they add another layer of mystery to the already eerie atmosphere of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Today, the Chernobyl exclusion zone stands as a stark and haunting reminder of the devastating consequences of nuclear disaster. The once vibrant city of Pripyat, frozen in time, serves as a poignant symbol of the human cost of the tragedy. Nature, however, has begun to reclaim the exclusion zone. Forests have encroached upon the abandoned settlements, their roots snaking through cracks in the pavement, slowly erasing the evidence of human presence. Wildlife, once scarce due to hunting and human activity, has flourished in the absence of humans. Wolves, deer, and even endangered species like Przewalski's horses now roam freely within the zone, their presence a testament to nature's resilience. The exclusion zone, despite its tragic past, has become an unexpected haven for wildlife and a living laboratory for scientists studying the long-term effects of radiation on the environment. The Chernobyl disaster, a tragedy etched in history, serves as a stark reminder of the immense power of nuclear energy and the importance of responsible stewardship of such potent forces. The lessons learned from Chernobyl extend far beyond the realm of nuclear power, offering valuable insights into the importance of safety culture, transparent communication, and international cooperation in the face of global threats. One of the most crucial takeaways from Chernobyl is the importance of a strong safety culture within high-risk industries. The disaster highlighted the dangers of complacency, secrecy, and the prioritization of production over safety. It underscored the need for open communication channels, independent regulatory oversight, and a culture where safety is paramount.
The radioactive fallout, unconcerned with national borders, spread far and wide, highlighting the interconnectedness of our world and the need for international cooperation in addressing nuclear safety concerns. The echoes of Chernobyl continue to resonate today, reminding us that the pursuit of technological advancement must go hand in hand with a commitment to safety, transparency, and international cooperation. The Chernobyl disaster, a chilling tale of human error and technological failure, continues to captivate and haunt us. It serves as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences that can arise when ambition outpaces caution, when secrecy trumps transparency, and when the pursuit of progress ignores the potential for peril. The story of Chernobyl is not just a historical event, it is a cautionary tale, a reminder of the responsibility that comes with wielding powerful technologies. As we delve into the ruins of Chernobyl, we are confronted with questions that extend far beyond the immediate disaster. How do we balance the pursuit of progress with the need for safety? What lessons can we learn from past mistakes to prevent future tragedies? We invite you to share your thoughts and reflections on the Chernobyl disaster. 